Hi guys, in this video I want to talk to you about the photo editing software Luminar 4.2. Before you go and drop your hard earned cash on any photo editing software, I want to share my honest thoughts about whether Luminar 4 and in particular Luminar 4.2 is actually any good. As I'm sure many of you will know, Luminar is a photo editing software that takes quite a unique approach to editing your photos. For some time now, it's been clear that Skylum, who make the software, have really put an emphasis on creating tools that they believe are going to make your workflow and photo editing process easier, more efficient, and more fun as a result. But is that actually the case? So recently, prior to the release of 4.2, I was emailed and offered the opportunity to create a paid review for Luminar 4.2. I actually declined because what I wanted to do was have the freedom to actually be impartial and review the software as I saw it um, without a bias one way or the other. So I have an opinion on it, um, but it is my own opinion. So let's dive in and have a look at what it can do for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is open Luminar 4. Now straight away it is opened so much quicker than it used to and that is a good sign for me. Let's make this full screen and I've already imported a folder with several images here on the left hand side as you can see and the idea with that is there are images that contain skies so that we can look at this new AI sky augmentation tool. So I'm going to talk to you quickly about why I think this is so great for starting photographers new to photo editing. Basically, it's really easy with this tool here, the AI Enhance. If we come to this drop down here and you grab this slider and drag it to the right, straight away that makes improvements to your image. The artificial intelligence looks at the image and it's smart enough to know where it should add contrast, what colors it should boost, things like that. Here there's also the AI structure tool and that is basically a more powerful version of say the clarity slider that you might find in Lightroom. So between the AI enhance and the AI structure, if you know nothing about photo editing, you can go from say this to this just with uh, working with two sliders, super easy. And to be honest, you get more bang for your buck with photos that aren't just like a night sky. But anyway, let's uh, let's come into the light tab here and you can control your temperature. Let's make a nice kind of bluey night sky. You've got smart contrast as well, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I quite like using a little bit of that there. But let's dive into what we are talking about with the improvement with Luminar 4.2 and that is the sky augmentation tool. So let's come to the creative tab which you'll find here. We've got essentials, creative, portrait and professional. Um, and here there used to be AI sky replacement on its own and that I actually think is a really cool and useful tool particularly if you have your own sky library um, but even if you don't it comes with skies okay well let's see what this ai augmented sky can do let's turn it on and select us a moon for example now let's place the object and i am going to put that uh -huh, behind this tree here uh, you can see we've got a little bit of fringing going on up above there not quite sure what's going on with that Let's try Moon 2 just as a comparison. Okay, how about we rotate the moon so that we get more of the light side of the moon, something like that. And we can position that behind the tree. I like that as if we've um, got a moonrise going on. The fact that it's masking out the tree nicely, it's recognizing where the horizon line is, I think that's a big positive for this software let's say we're happy with that and click place object and the last thing i may do is just crop this in ever so slightly so we could bring that so it's just a little bit more attention on the moon the tree and the milky way let's say done on that so already i'm noticing after i've applied the crop that is so much quicker 
to actually crop that down. For some reason in the first version of Luminar 4, it did take a little while, um, but that does seem a lot speedier to me. Whether or not you want to add something like the moon into a shot that you've taken, that is entirely up to you. That is a photographically ethical question and only you can come up with your own answer to that. I'm just purely showing you what the tool is capable of in this video. So let's see what else there is in the drop down box that comes with it. So we can have an aurora, birds, clouds, fireworks, lightning, moons, mountains, planes and planets and some rainbows too. And it looks like you can load your own custom image as well. So, I, so there's no reason why you couldn't build your own library of stock that you can use or even just download some stock images to incorporate as well. Now let's load up this tree image here, which at the moment, there's not too much going on with this, to be honest. It's honestly just a snapshot. Thus far, this photo has had nothing done to it at all. Let's just quickly come back into the Essentials tab and we can just grab that AI Enhance Accent slider again, just, just push that up slightly. And you can see it's adding some blue to the sky, just a little bit of contrast. So I like that. I'm just going to leave that in there for now and say so that's all I'm going to do, uh, which, yeah, if you're wanting a quick fix to improve your photos, simple. But now let's come and see what the new tool can do for us. Let's go to AI Augmented Sky. And for this one, I think I'm going to try a rainbow. OK, so let's place object and give that a little move. OK, see, we've got a hard edge here. So if I move that down, I'm not liking the fact that it's got a hard edge. But I see we have an edit mask. So let's edit mask with a brush. So we're going to erase just with the feathered area of the brush, that hard edge there. So let's go over that a couple of times. Nice. So if we look at our before and after by clicking the eye icon, we can see that that is our before. That is our after, before, after. That's just a, a nice little edit. And if you wanted to throw that on Instagram, for example, you'd get a lot of people going, ooh, wow. And again, ethically, whether or not you want to add something that wasn't really there, that is entirely up to you. But the option to do that is there. So let's do a couple of other ones here. Let's open this image here, which looks super grainy because it's just loading into Luminar and boom, it's loaded. On the first version, it used to take so much longer to actually load the photos up, but we're ready to go already, which is quite nice. Um, and I'm going to actually try adding into this stormy area here, the lightning that was in here. Let's go for lightning one and see what that does for us. That's kind of cool. Like that's put in there. And if you didn't know it wasn't there initially, uh, that that could fool somebody. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. That's really cool, I think. Let's try lightning two. Boom, again, it's recognized where the sky is. Um, you've got some nice soft transition into the clouds. That's really cool. This area here, the masking is not great. So let's see what we can quickly do with that. Ah, it's because it finishes. So let's increase the size of the lightning. And I think what we'll do is actually just mask out the bottom of that again. Not quite sure what's going on there at the bottom of that lightning, but we don't need that, do we? There we go. We've added some lightning very, very simply and quickly. OK, you could do something similar, say, to this image here. You could throw some lightning through there. So let's let's try that as well. Let's come to object selection drop down and let's put some lightning uh, do you know what let's let's go for something different i mean the ridiculous would be like putting fireworks in there um so i mean i get the point that people are making that this tool is a little silly and um why have luminar put that in there but i think if you use it with subtlety and you 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 know it's there like you don't have to use it but what you can do is utilize when you think it's appropriate. So let's say if we wanted to take this to the next level with some lightning, you know, that might be just what you're looking for to really take this image to the next level. A lot of people buy my landscape photography for their walls because they're looking for something with real impact, something that's a little different that no one else has taken. And if I've got tools such as this that can help me elevate my imagery 
and I never claim that my photos are exactly as the camera. So I'm creating a vision, an artistic vision, what I have in my mind of what I think will look really nice on the wall. So I'm not a photography purist from that point of view by any means. So a tool like this to have it at my disposal and the ease at which I can do that is really cool. Okay, I've opened up one more image and what I'd like to do here, because I feel this image is pretty meh, but it's the kind of thing that somebody might just snap and not really know what to do with. Let's see how good is Luminar 4 for beginner photographers just to get going and let's take it from the top. So first of all, you've got your exposure. It's a little dark here, so we could crank the exposure up just a smidge. Um, smart contrast might be worth bringing in. Yeah, that's that's nice. I like that. And if you want to control your highlights and shadows, even your black points, your, your histogram, you can do all of that. But I said we'd keep it simple, so let's do that. AI Enhance is always worth opening up, grabbing that Accent AI. And although I don't recommend going to 100% with pretty much any of these tools because they are quite powerful, um, I would say throw it to 100% to see what the effect is doing and then just ease it back to where you think it's enhancing the photo without damaging it. And somewhere around there, I'm quite happy with. Let's go to AI structure. A bit of that might help the mountains. So let's let's push this up. Oh yeah, it's kind of popping the clouds there as well, which is pretty cool. I'm not really in love with the clouds in this image. I was more taken by the, the tree line with the mountains in the back, but I would have preferred something more interesting in the sky. So maybe we'll have a look when we get to the creative tab and see if we can do a sky replacement. Right now, my wife, my children are fast asleep in bed. I really enjoy doing these YouTube videos, but it's a lonely, lonely gig. So do me a favor, write me a little comment, um, give me a thumbs up, like, you know, all, all that stuff. Hit the bell as well, subscribe, rah, rah, rah. All that stuff, I really appreciate it. Hey, um, thank you and we'll get back to Luminar 4. So with color, if you do wanna take things a little bit further rather than just grabbing the vibrancy and pushing that up and you wanna get color specific, you can do that. That is one of the reasons that I think Luminar is fantastic for beginner photographers, but also photographers at a higher level. And I've said it in the past and I'll say it again, it's got the ability to grow with you as a photographer. As your editing and understanding of how you edit a photo evolves, the tools are there within the software. Go to the advanced tab, see what else you can do and just take things to the next level. If you're like, ooh, I don't know what a histogram is, I don't know what the curves do, leave them alone. Just stick to the AI enhance slider, things like that, because you can still get some really great results just with a couple of tools but you can take things further if you want. And that's what we're gonna do here. We are gonna say, I don't like the green, I find it just a little bit too in your face. So I'm gonna click on the green here and I'm gonna desaturate it. Not only that, I'm gonna push the hue of that, not this way, but this way, more towards a sort of orangey color so that we're getting a more harmonized kind of orange and yellow vibe complementing the blue. So if we wanted to come to the yellows, for example, like which is what's going on with the trees here and just crank that up just a little bit, even bring the luminance up, we can do that. So our attention is more here and the mountains recede away. I like that. One thing I don't like is the fact that because this was just a quick snap off the camera, no tripod, we're not straight. So let's just quickly fix that up. We can click to the side of the image here and you can see we can rotate. So with these little guidelines here, we can make sure that the horizon is nice and straight and just click done. And again, boom, that cropping is so much faster than it used to be. Thank you, Luminar. If you are new to photo editing, a good thing to know about is vignetting. So that's just a darkening of the corners um, or brightening. Uh, you can go bright, you can go dark. I prefer to go dark um, because our eyes like to go to the brightest part of the image. Let's keep that in the center. Um, a really cool thing is you can also bring the center up. So you can darken the edges and brighten the, the center. But we don't want to brighten that too much because we're blowing out our clouds here, making them pure white, and that's never a good thing. We can just tickle that up just a wee bit. And now we could move on to the creative tab. Okay, so we've already had a little play around with the AI augmented sky tool that's just been added. I think what's much more useful is the actual sky replacement tool. 
And the really cool thing about that is that AI behind it is doing all the masking and the hard work for you, which is great. So if you want to change out a sky, you can get that result done really, really quickly. Let's take a look here. Let's do the AI sky replacement. Let's choose something dramatic, like I don't know, dramatic sky four. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's okay. But let's try a dramatic sunset instead. Okay, let's go with this, um, but we've got an issue. If you look here, the light on the trees is coming from the right hand side, but the sun is here. So what we can do is actually flip the sky. And now that's much more believable. And if we feel that the color tones within the sky don't really match what we've got going on here, what you can do is actually use this relight scene slider. And that does a very good job at kind of matching what's in the sky to what's in the foreground. You can improve the mask around here just simply by moving these sliders, but we'll just leave that for now. It's close enough for this example. Let's get some atmospheric haze. Now this was added in Luminar 4.1 and I'm a big fan of this. So here we can add a little bit of atmospheric haze and that just pushes the sky back just a little bit. Turn that off and back on. And we've got a much more interesting sky going on, and that's pretty cool. One of my favorite tools from Luminar 3 was the sun rays tool. You can pop a sun center on here and move this to where your sun is. You can increase the amount and look, you've got sun rays. And the cool thing is using the mask here, you can actually just paint those rays just where you want them. So for example, let's go edit mask, brush, and this time we are going to just paint in the rays that we want. So I like the idea of the rays coming down, not up into the sky. And look at that, just like that, before and after. Now, if you were to do this in something like Photoshop, you can achieve this result, but it would take you much, much longer. These other tools here are all really great too, but look, let's just look at a couple. Mystical I quite like because it gives a kind of dreamy, ethereal look to your image. So if we put that all the way to 100, again, way, way, way too much, but we see what it's doing. Let's bring it down, you know, just tickle it in at around, I don't know, seven, nine, whatever. Happy days, color styles. This is for color toning your image and it's really, really nice way to quickly color grade your photo. So like that tritone, if you wanted to go for like a washed out kind of look, that's pretty cool. Um, these cinematic tonings here are pretty cool as well. Quite like Anaheim for that. Ooh, Long Beach is nice and rich. Let's click that. And again, you've just got a slider to control the amount, which is really, really nice. You want to throw some fog in there. We can do that. Push this up and you think, what, what's going on? It's just bleaching out the whole photo. Don't you panic about that, my friend. Edit mask, brush, and we could just paint that in along the uh, the foreground here because it's probably just gonna sit in the field, isn't it? So I could say done like this, but what I've decided I think would look quite nice is actually just cropping this to a tighter ratio, like a six by nine or something. So let's come back in and we can crop this down. And what I'd like to do is go for a more of a movie style ratio here, which is uh, nine to 16. Now we don't want vertical, but we do want to go horizontal. So we can actually flip that over this way just by dragging that handle out. And that handle is not going too much further. There we go. Let's bring this up here. Let's expand it over that side. Now we'll go with that. I'm gonna click done. It's gonna apply the crop and it is so much quicker than it has been in the past and I love that. So now let's do my favorite thing, which is to look at our before and our after. Our before and our after. Let's just have a very quick look at the photographs that we've edited. <laughs>
So to summarize, I've found Luminar 4.2 to be much, much more responsive and quicker than it's been in the past. Nice one, Luminar. Who is this software good for? Well, as I've said before, I think beginner photo editors, beginner photographers will really, really benefit from this because the sliders make everything really, really intuitive and you can get some really great results without knowing too much about photo editing, which part of me finds really annoying when I think of all the time I've invested over the years in my photo editing education. But eh, that's another matter. Is Luminar any good for professional photographers? That is a really valid question as well. And probably I wouldn't recommend it as a sole standalone photo editor for a professional photographer. However, I do think it's a really valuable asset to a professional photographer. Reason being, you can use it just to finesse those last touches on your work. I use it continually for architectural photography and I've actually done a couple of videos where I showed my finishing process using Luminar and that's going out to high-end architects and magazines. And I also use it just to elevate my landscape photography as well. And also sometimes to see what a photo will be like if I take it in a certain direction. So if you do want to get hold of a copy of Luminar, I do have a discount code. I've had it for forever. They gave it to me back in Luminar 3. It's still active. So help yourself to that. It's at Sky 10. It will save you, I think, $10, providing there's not another promotion on at the time. But try to check out, save yourself some money. Once you've got Luminar 4, any updates, I believe, right the way, probably until they release Luminar 5, will be free for you. So any potential bugs or issues the software may have, um, and I haven't come across any myself yet, um, they, they're always working to iron these things out. And with every software release, it becomes more and more stable. So I think it's only a good thing. So... Photo editing is a lot of fun and I really enjoyed doing it with Luminar 4. So I hope you've enjoyed this Luminar 4.2 review and look at what it can do. And guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much.